The Treasurer is pointing to the government's economic record tonight, low unemployment, a return to surplus from next year and promised tax cuts. Isn't that a reasonable case for voters to give them the opportunity to keep managing the economy? Well, if this is a re-election pitch, Lee, it's a very underwhelming document. In fact, this is a budget by a government which has given up governing. I mean, the budget itself forecasts lower wages growth, lower economic growth, lower consumption growth, uh, and has no plan to do anything about it. And as, for the sur and as for the surplus, Lee, I mean, nearly a quarter of it comes from spending less on disabled people. Uh, the rest comes from highly heroic wages assumptions. I mean, we've got the lowest wages growth on record, uh, which this budget again downgrades, as every other Liberal budget has done, but then it jumps up towards the end of the budget like a magic beanstalk, just assumed to return to higher levels to underpin a surplus. And the rest comes from a higher tax revenues and high commodity prices, which have got nothing to do with Canberra or the Federal Government. But nonetheless, um, would you acknowledge that we do have low, un low inflation, we do have low unemployment, we are on track to return to a surplus? Well, uh, well, the Government has forecast a return to surplus. It hasn't delivered one. It's forecast one. And the forecast are subject to you know, some questioning, particularly around wages. Now, of course, we want them to get back to surplus. We will get back to surplus if we're in office. We've taken the policy decisions to get back to surplus. Actually, this government's policy, policy decisions make the surplus $13 billion lower over the forward estimates than it otherwise would be. Well, can I ask, so this just to be totally clear for the viewers, if Labor is elected next month, you will be the Treasurer this time next year, will Labor deliver a budget surplus in 2019-20? Well, we'll certainly budget for a surplus, absolutely, because we've made the tough decisions. And in fact, based from, on from that first year, uh, yes, and ba based on the figures we've seen uh, tonight, we will deliver a better budget bottom line over the forward estimates than the government has, and we can say that because we've made the policy decisions. Their policy decisions have actually made the budget bottom line worse, not better. But what they'd say is that you're um, getting to that because you're higher taxing. Well, they've got the tax to GDP has gone up under them. I mean, revenue to GDP has gone up two percentage but points over their time on office. You. Their time in office. Now we've got a range of policies. Take tax, for example. They've finally caught up with us on tax cuts for lower middle income earners today, with one big exception. I mean, last year, 12 months ago, Bill Shorten and I and the Labor Party announced tax cuts for 10 million Australians earning less than $125,000 that were almost double what the government offered in the last budget. Now, they've caught up today, so that's good. The one good thing in the budget is they've caught up with us, with one big exception. They haven't caught up with us for those 2 million Australians who earn $40,000 or less. I mean, this is a government which never misses an opportunity to treat the low, lowest income earners in our society with great contempt. The budget papers this year repeatedly warn about the possible impact of the housing downturn on the economy. Will Labor rethink its negative gearing and capital gains policies, given how much the housing market has changed since you first announced them? We've announced the right policies, um, which were calibrated to take into account a whole range of market conditions. And even when we announced, people say, oh, when you announced it three years ago, the market was different. And it was different, of course, in Sydney and Melbourne. But it was different again in Perth, which was already suffering a downturn. We've made the right policy decisions for the long term to put first home buyers on a more level playing field with investors. For example, no negative gearing and, and capital gains tax are part of our housing policy offerings. We announced an, another big policy on Friday, Build to Rent, making a more competitive tax regime for Build to Rent. We've announced the National Rental Affordability Scheme, 250,000 houses to be built over the decade. So take our policies as a whole. They are the right policies for the times. We've had the gumption to put them out for the Australian people for judgment and we'll take them to the people and seek to implement them. Um, will Labor back the instant asset write-off going up to $30,000 and applying to businesses with a turnover of up to $50 million? Yeah, we always back changes to the instant asset write-off. It was a Wayne Swan initiative when he was Treasurer and every time it's been improved and expanded we've supported it. But the Government missed an opportunity again to go further tonight and match our policy of the Australian Investment Guarantee, a 20% write-off of all investments over $20,000 for all businesses, uh, small, medium or large, which would be a big spur to investment, which is what we need. Would Labor have passed the mid-year tax payments on offer to 10 million Australians um, had the government been prepared to put it to the parliament this yeah, week? We, I've said we support them. Uh, they should have been improved. They should have been improved for those Australians earning less than $40,000. But we would, of course, support that tax relief being provided because it catches up with the commitment that Labor gave last year. Josh Frydenberg wants to make this election about tax, partly. Um, so let me ask it as simply as I can. Will workers pay more in income tax under a Labor government than they would under a coalition government? No, um, because in, indeed uh, the government, as I keep saying, has caught up with our tax cuts. So. 
to that degree. Um, now that, th that those uh, workers will be the same, every worker earning less than $180,000 will pay the same in income tax. Um, but what about over $100,000? Well, so those earning $40,000 or less will be, un will be better off under a Labor government. Those earning one over $180,000, we will have a temporary uh, levy on those people. But every Australian earning less than $180,000 better off under a Labor government uh, or, or the same. And those earning $40,000 or less are better off under a Labor government. Chris Bowen, thank you very much for joining us. Great pleasure, Lee.